Warriors were down 24 in the first half. They cut up to 14 by the break. Third quarter to actually take the lead, and the Warriors had this game on a silver platter, but the Philadelphia Sixers, too tough down the stretch, limiting the Warriors to 11 points for the most part of that fourth quarter as they lose by 10 and lose their second straight game before they head to Sacramento Thursday, the day of the NBA trading deadline, as we welcome everybody to Warriors Post Game Live, presented by Toyota. I'm with the Hall of Famer, Chris Mullen, NBA champ, Darrell Wright, and former Warrior, and of course, Bonte Hill. And let's start with the positives here, fellas, and look at this third quarter, because the Warriors, we thought, man, they're going to get blown out the gym here. Ben is rolling, Tobias Harris is rolling, but they scrapped their way back into the game by hitting a three ball, Darrell, five, six threes in that third quarter after hitting just one in the first half. Yeah, they found their they found their rhythm around the perimeter. Guys took a bunch of shots with a bunch of confidence, and guys shared the ball. They moved it, and they got a 40 point quarter out of these guys. So we talked about at halftime, you know, setting the tone, coming out in the third quarter, and that's exactly what they did. Big time competitive spirit, great comeback. They shared the basketball. They didn't turn the basketball over, so they did a really good job there. As you said, Bonte, after making one three point shot in the first half, they went six for seven mm -hmm. in that third quarter to actually take the lead. Uh, too much uh, spurt from the sixes uh, in the fourth quarter. But I, I, I think being down uh, Steph Curry yeah. and getting down by 24, really impressive comeback. No doubt about it. The 18 to 5 run there in that third quarter to take a lead. They had a lead early in the fourth quarter, but the Sixers here in crunch time as we look at this video going a 10 2 run to take control of the game and they are just so active defensively long athletic and it all starts with Ben Simmons. But here we'll look at some of the crunch time stats here. And Wiggins with a great play here. Kelly Oubre Jr. with the double double bully 24 10 and it looked like the Warriors as they tie the game there. They were in this thing and then Tobias Harris. He's just a beast. He's a big time player left off the all star team playing with a chip on his shoulder. Average about 20 points per game and doing that efficiently 50 from the field 40 from the three and 90 from the free throw line. That little runner looked a little bit like Bernard King. That was a mm. tough shot. Good defense by Draymond. Just a, just a tough shot by Tobias Harris. Yeah, he's I, whoever left him off the all star game made a big yeah. mistake. So I'm just, put that out there but I thought he made some big time shots Milton uh, Bradley was nice all night around the uh, basket just putting things back in there and Ben Simmons you know he, he set the tone early and everybody else just follow his lead a Doc Rivers team they play to their strengths they stay away from their weaknesses Ben Simmons doesn't shoot the three well so he doesn't shoot it he gets he uses his speed his great ball handling he's ambidextrous he gets into the lane for those little floaters and finishes and all, by also doing that, he collapses the defense. He kicks out to his three-point shooters. They just got a spurt in that fourth quarter and took control of the game. But I thought it was a really nice comeback by the Warriors. They didn't turn it over. Uh, defensively, they did a, did a solid job. And they found points throughout the game, just not enough in the fourth quarter. Well, Dr. Rell, watching this Philadelphia team tonight, they're number one in the Eastern Conference. No Embiid tonight, no Seth Curry. Embiid's playing like an MVP. Can this team compete with the Brooklyn Nets when it's all said and done in the Eastern Conference? I think so. I think they're missing a big piece in Joel Embiid, and he's one of those guys that's going to take those big men out around the perimeter. He's going to play inside as well. You got Ben Simmons, and we talk about their length and their size. They're a big team, so I think they could go out there and compete with anybody in the Eastern Conference. I can't. I won't say that they can beat the Nets right now. It's something I definitely want to see, but I think they can definitely match up well because they defend at a high level as well. I think they have a chance to, to, to beat Brooklyn. I think they'll be in the finals, right? But Embiid, just like Steph Curry, that's their MVP. Right. So, you know, obviously a totally different team without those two players. Seth Curry's a key to them yeah. as well. He's a great three-point shooter. He also makes plays off the dribble. Don't underrate that. He's a very good playmaker. But what Doc Rivers has done with Embiid, he's put him on the block more. He, he does shoot threes occasionally, but he does his work first and foremost on the block, and he works his way out. But, you know, he forces double teams. Yeah. And then Tobias Harris, Seth Curry, uh, and, and there are the uh, Green. all those Danny three Green point shoes are out there. So it's a huge difference when Embiid's in the lineup. No yes. doubt. Let's talk about Kelly Oubre Jr. for a second because he's been in a bit of a funk here. Tried to break out of it Saturday night in the second half against the Memphis Grizzlies. And tonight, early on, he was struggling with the shot, but I thought he got going here. Uh, Darrell, 24 points, 10 rebounds. 
got to the rack, 204 from the three point line. I like what I saw from Kelly Oubre Jr. tonight. Yeah, I thought he had a great game, and I thought in that second half he was a big pre uh, reason of that comeback. But I love when he's going to the rim, he's attacking, he's trying to be athletic and play over the rim. That opens his shot up all the time. We've been saying that all year. When he's struggling, once he gets to the basket, once he gets to that free throw line, the shots around the perimeter start falling for him. This is a vintage Kelly Oubre Jr. game where he starts off kind of quiet, but then he starts driving to, to the lane, gets a few easy baskets. His defense is consistent all night long. And then slowly but surely, the three-point shot comes around. I thought he made some clutch baskets yep. when, when they took the lead. Um, but he just let the game come to him. It's nice to see him get 10 rebounds. Right. Yeah. Eight for 14. It was, that, was a, that was a beautifully well-played game by Kelly Oubre. Yeah, that was a key for him in the month of February when he was averaging 20 points and seven rebounds. But let's hit up with the top. Let's go to the top story of the day. Our news alert here on Post Game Live. And it's Steph Curry. Of course, he missed tonight with the bruised tailbone. We saw him there on the sideline. Well, Steve Kerr announced in his pregame presser that Curry will miss the next week. That includes the Sacramento game on Thursday, the Atlanta Hawks on Friday, and the Chicago Bulls next Monday night. A tough loss for the Golden State Warriors. We're trying to talk about Philly having an MVP on the bench. Well, they still have Ben Simmons and Tobias Harris. The Warriors are a bit younger here, so trying to overcome Steph Curry. The loss of Steph Curry is just too, a tall task against one of the best Eastern Conference teams in the league. No question. You think about it, you're down 24, you make that run, and then you kind of stall out. You can't score enough baskets. With Steph Curry in the game, it's a whole different ball yeah. game. Um, but you got to be careful with this injury. That tailbone's dangerous, is, you know, between your, your lower back. Uh, when you get injured like that, the muscles around that area are going to tense up. Um, so you got to be careful with this for sure. So you got to take his time and make sure he's healthy when he does come back. Yeah, he definitely needs to take his time. But the biggest thing is they're going to miss those 30 points. I think they have two winnable games and maybe even the Hawks. They can give them a, a good fight. I know they're rolling right now, but it's some winnable games coming up and they're definitely going to miss them in that lineup. You know, bringing that leadership, bringing that that closer mentality. So uh, hopefully he gets well, gets back on that court as soon as possible. Is this one of the more trickier injuries? I know a lot of people talk about a hamstring injury, an ankle injury, but you were talking about this when he suffered that injury, Darrell, how tailbones can be tricky. Could be a one-week injury, could be a two-week injury. How tricky is this injury? Kind of explain here to our audience what a tailbone injury does to you. Yeah, it's just it's uncomfortable. That's the biggest thing. We saw that when he was getting up. He thought he was good, and then he kind of like, you know, grimaced a little bit because he knew that it was a little more painful than what he thought. But it's one of those things you really can't treat. It's all about feel, so... Uh, I'm pretty sure he's probably feeling a little bit better, but like Mully said, you know, that just triggers other muscles around uh, the tailbone. So hopefully he gets back quick. Most people at some point in time have some back pain and it's excruciating. And, and the thing is your core here is connected to everything, be your hamstrings, your quads, and that, that's what athlete, that's what sports is all about, your core, core strength and core health. Man, tough blow for Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors. They lose their second straight as we look at our Toyota drive ahead at the Western Conference standings here. And the Warriors with the loss, they fall three and a half behind the Portland Trail Trailblazers as they try to avoid that playing tournament. Still up on the Memphis Grizzlies. But you see them behind Dallas now a game and a half. They split that series down in Dallas. San Antonio still hanging around that seven spot. So a tough loss for the Warriors as they still try to compete for the NBA playoffs. And We'll see if they can get back on track Thursday against the Sacramento team that doesn't play a lot of defense. They don't play defense at all. They gave up a lot of points to the same Philadelphia Sixers team. So the trade deadline is Thursday, high noon here on the West Coast. Will it be active? Will it not be? Mullen, how, what's your feel for the NBA trade line this year? Considering all the protocols with COVID-19, no fans in the arena, will teams want to spend extra cash? Lakers hurt right now, so it may change the thought process of some teams in the Western Conference. Well, you always have buyers and sellers. And, you, and the teams that think they can make a run, they're going to be trying to add to their roster to, to bolster them up. The Western Conference is all jammed up. Yep. So they're going to be looking for that one player that can, you know, make a decisive change in, the, in their team. As far as the Warriors are concerned, obviously the, the one player, because of his, his expiring contract, is Kelly Oubre. I think he's a great fit here, but he's also covered around the league. The fact that he has an expiring contract, if you don't think you can retain him, you probably want to move him to get something uh, to move forward with. Whether, you know, there's been a lot of speculation of who those players are, whether it be Aaron Gordon, uh, they talked about a guard out there. Bogdanovich with that. Bogdanovich from Montel Atlanta. Ball. Those, those players make sense because they can fit in the way Steve Kerr plays, but also they're under contract. So you can use the rest of this year uh, to, to get them integrated into your, uh, into your culture. 
but you also the plays that you want to move forward with. That's that's kind of the thought process. Darrell, what is it like at the trade deadline as a player? Kelly Oubre Jr. going through it all season long, put up some good numbers tonight, uh, 24 and 10. But knowing in the back of his mind, and this may be the last game I ever wear Warriors right. uniform here. What is that like? Like a what is that like as a player to have your name in trade rumors every single day? And the trade deadline is coming up. How tough is it to focus on the game? How tough is it to go out there and compete, knowing that in the back of your mind it may be your last game with that organization? <laughs> it's super tough because you come in, you put so much into the game, you want to execute the game plan, you want to do what you can for the team, and then you hear your name. And I couldn't even imagine, like when Twitter first came around, I was still in the league, but now it's on a different level. So you're seeing every time you click on the TV, on Twitter, Instagram, whatever, you're seeing that in your face. So I know it definitely can be stressful. And, uh, you know, but I, I feel like if your name is being brought up, that's a good thing because, you know, you have some type of value and somebody thinks you can, you know, help their team win. Kelly Uber is 25, yep. one of the most dynamic athletes in the league. He's going to be fine. Yep. So, yep. You know, if he stays here, I think he's, a, I think he's per personally a perfect fit. If he moves on, he's going to get a good contract and that team's going to be happy to have him. No doubt.